In this video, we are going to do some function analysis using this function as an example. And we'll be doing things like uh, writing it as a piecewise function, finding the domain and range, intervals of increasing and decreasing, and we'll talk about the points of discontinuity. Let's start by writing this function as a piecewise function. So looking at the first part of the graph right here, uh, this seems to be part of a parabola. You can see that uh, if I were to do the mirror image of this on the other side, okay, it would look like this. So this seems to be one half of a parabola. Okay, uh, you know what, let me put that back for a second. However, um, we know that the parent function of a parabola, which is y equals x squared, uh, has the vertex of the parabola at the origin, like this. So this parabola has been shifted to the left by four. So because the parabola has been shifted to the left by four, um, instead of being simply uh, x squared, this is going to be x plus 4 squared. So that's what's going on for this piece of the graph right here. All right, so that's why when we do our first piece of the piecewise function, we are going to write um, x plus four squared. Next, we need to put the domain of this piece of the graph. So this piece of the graph, when we do the domain, we're just talking about the x values. So this part of the graph goes from here to here as we look at the x values. So from left to right, that is negative infinity to negative four. Notice that the negative four is a closed circle. So when I say negative infinity to negative four, I'm gonna put a square bracket on that to show that negative four is included. Uh, if you prefer doing this using inequalities, the other way you could write this is to say uh, x is less than or equal to negative four, because it's negative four and to the left. All right, either one of these are fine. Let's move on to the middle piece of this graph. All right, um, so looking at this piece of the graph right here, this appears to be part of an absolute value function. We know that uh, an absolute value function, the parent function looks like this, okay? Absolute value of x. Um, but a parent function like that would look like this. It would be a v, but it would be an upward facing v. Notice the slope, I carefully did this up one over one. Okay, so this V is what the absolute value of X looks like. Um, so our image, this uh, middle portion of the graph, is the same thing, but it's upside down. So it's a, it's a reflection over the X axis. So I'm gonna need a negative sign in front of here to indicate that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a negative sign. And now that is the function of which this is a piece. All right, but that's why I'm gonna go ahead and say um, negative absolute value of x for this middle piece right here. And now it's time to say the domain. Well, this portion of the graph goes from here to here. If you look at the x-axis, notice that both of these are open circles. So when I say 
negative 4 to 2, I'm going to use parentheses, negative 4 to 2, to show that these points are not included in the domain. If you prefer inequalities, uh, to capture all the values between negative 4 and 2, you would say negative 4 is less than x, which is less than 2. All right, that's the inequality way of saying the same thing. All right, now let's turn to this last piece of the graph. All right, this piece of the graph is one piece of a straight line. The slope seems to be 1, all right? It's up 1 over 1, so the slope is 1. I'm going to continue this line in the other direction just so we can see where the y-intercept would have been. So notice the y-intercept of this line is 2. So when we write the equation of a line, we usually go y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Well, the slope of this line is 1, so that makes this uh, 1x, or simply x, and then plus b. Well, the b is the y-intercept, which is 2, so that makes this x plus 2. So that is going to be the equation of the line of which this is a piece. All right, so that's so the x plus 2 is why I'm going to have x plus 2 as my final piece right here. Um, notice that I'm leaving off the y equals part. Like normally we would say y equals x plus 2. The reason why I'm just writing the x plus 2 part is because the y is covered by the f of x. All right, f of x is like a y. So we are really saying y equals this, y equals this, and y equals this all at the same time. The y is over here. But now we need the domain of this piece. Okay, so look at the x values where this part of the function lives. This part of the function goes from here on. So that's from 2 to infinity. Notice this is a closed circle, so I will show that as a square bracket. So I'm going to say it goes from 2 to infinity. Or if you prefer inequalities, you would say x is greater than or equal to 2. I put that or equal to on there to show that this point is included. It's a closed circle. All right, now let's talk about the domain and range of this function. Um, let's start with the domain. The domain is the set of x values included in a function. So um, as we explore the x values, I'm going to use this vertical line. So this will show us the x values that are included. Um, every, everywhere the vertical line is touching the graph, that's an x value that's in the function. So um, I see this arrow. So this graph goes left forever. Um, so then I'm starting. I have x values here, 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 x values. What about right here? What is the x value right here? The x value is at uh, negative 4 because of the closed circle. It's not down here. Well, the x, sorry, the x value is at negative 4. Um, uh, negative 4 comma 0. It's not down here at negative 4 comma negative 4 because that's an open circle. But we do have an x value right here. Okay, um, now we have more x values, more x values, more x values. Um, right here, the x value is up here at positive 4, um, but it's covered. So as you can see, as I go from left to right across here, every x value is on this graph somewhere. 
there are no gaps. There's no time that my green line hits a place where I'm not touching the function. So every x value is covered by this graph. That's why the domain is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. All the x values are covered. All right, can we say the same thing for y values? As we talk about the range, we are talking about the set of y values included in a function. So this time I'm going to draw a horizontal line and I'm going to use this to visualize the y values of this function. Um, a common mistake is students will sometimes give me three different parts for the domain or they'll give me three different parts for the range. So they'll try to give me the domain of one piece, the domain of another piece, and the domain of another piece. Same with the range. But this, this whole picture represents one single function. So you are not to give me three separate ranges. I want the range of this entire image. So from bottom to top, Okay, from bottom to top, ask yourself, what is the lowest y value of this graph, of the whole graph? All right, and it seems like the lowest spot on the graph is right here. Uh, it's here at negative 4. So the range is going to start at negative 4. All right, now notice I'm putting a round parenthesis right here because this is an open circle. Negative four itself is not included. So how far does it go? So it's this graph starts at negative four and it goes up from there. So we have y values, we're still touching. As long as we're touching, we still have y values, right? We still have y values. Um, there's no gap right here. All right, we're still touching y values here and here. All right, y values, y values, more y values, and then it just keeps going forever. So starting at negative four, we have y values covered all the way up to infinity from there. Um, notice there are no gaps. There, there was no place where my horizontal line did not touch the graph. So every y value from negative 4 up was covered. So that's why the range is going to be from negative 4 to infinity. All right, we did not need separate intervals for the range. The only time you would need separate intervals is um, if there was a gap. Imagine that. Uh, this part of the function, instead of going all the way up to zero, imagine that it was way down here somewhere. Okay, imagine that it did something like this instead. All right, um, in that case, there would be a gap in between here. All of this zone right here, there would be a gap between negative four and zero, all right, if this had been moved down. So then we'd, we would need one part of the range for this blue part, and then another interval for the rest of it. But as it was, there's no gap. All right, moving on to intervals where the function is increasing, intervals of decreasing. One thing I need to emphasize to you as we do this part, when we talk about intervals of increasing and decreasing, please understand that we are talking about x values only. We are only talking about x values. So in other words, we're talking about parts of the domain. Okay, so think like you think for a domain. If I were to travel along this function, like it was some type of a mountain path. I would be going from left to right. I would be going downhill for this portion of the graph. And then I would be going, whoops, 
want the highlighter, then I would be going uphill until here, and then I'd be going downhill again for this part of the graph, and then I'd be going uphill the rest of the time. So everywhere I was going downhill is going to be a decreasing interval, and everywhere I went uphill will be an increasing interval. All right, so, um, but remember I said x values. So this decreasing interval right here, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, reflect this onto the x-axis. All right, I'm going to find the image of this on the x-axis. So I'm just going to erase this highlighter. On the x-axis, this portion of the graph goes from here to here. Okay, um, now, what about this portion of the graph? Okay, this is a green portion. It's an uphill portion. But uh, on the x-axis, this part of the graph goes from here to here. Okay, this portion of the graph, which is a downhill portion, the x values go from here to here. And finally, this uphill portion of the graph, if I look at the x-axis, it goes from here to here. So now I'm ready to say all of the increasing and decreasing intervals. The red intervals are decreasing and the green intervals are increasing. All right, let's do the increasing intervals first. Um, I have an increasing interval from negative four to zero. Negative four to zero. And I have another increasing interval from two to infinity. So I will say union to, to infinity. Notice I'm using parentheses everywhere. When you're doing increasing and decreasing intervals, there will be no square brackets. All right, the endpoints are considered neither increasing nor decreasing. Okay, um, so those are the increasing values. Now let's talk about the decreasing intervals. All right, looking at the red intervals, um, my first one goes from negative infinity to negative four. So it's decreasing from negative infinity to negative four. And I'll say union because I have another one coming from zero to two, All right? This was a decreasing part from zero to two on the x-axis. All right, so that's how you do intervals of increasing and decreasing. All right, um, one more thing I want to do on this video is um, let's talk about the points of discontinuity. Now, a quick reminder, when we talk about discontinuity, there are three types of uh, discontinuities. A discontinuity is some type of break in the, in the function. It's a break in the graph. All right, and there are three main ways that, that can happen. Sometimes there is a jump discontinuity, and that's where the graph um, has a, a big old gap in it. All right, something like that maybe. Um, sometimes there is a removable discontinuity. All right, a removable discontinuity is just when you have a, a hole in the graph, a single missing point, right? Not a big gap, just a single missing point. And um, finally, there is an infinite discontinuity. And that's when you have an asymptote involved, splitting up the graph. So maybe I'll have one side over here going like this. All right, because there's an asymptote. 
Maybe I'll have another side over here going like this, approaching that asymptote. There is a break in the graph, but it's an asymptote that's called an infinite discontinuity. Okay, um, so you can see where we have breaks in the graph. So we have a break in the graph right here, all right? Now that's a big old gap. So that is a jump discontinuity, and it is at an x value of negative four. So we're gonna say um, jump at x equals negative four. All right, I see another break in the graph right here. Now this is another jump discontinuity, all right? It's another gap. And this one is at two. So we can just say there's a there's a jump at x equals negative four, and there's a jump at two. All right, or I guess I could have just said jump at x equals negative four and x equals two. All right, but there you go, discontinuity.